This is McCook's Mr. Bill. It's an honor to have you here. First day of deer season out here in southwest Nebraska. I've been around it for 50 years because my wife has lived deer hunting since a little bitty girl on up. She would go with her father and brothers out deer hunting. She didn't shoot, but she was with them. She experienced it from youth on, and so she so enjoyed and enthralled by it that it is almost a religion to her and that family to hunt deer. And once she started shooting deer, rest assured, she has hunted deer all the rest of her life. And she's 69, and she's out there hunting yet today. I don't know if we needed you up here. With that in mind, you're here for deer stories. Okay. Very good friend of mine, the first time he went deer hunting, he was fresh married early 1970s. That's right. And so what he did, he bought a bow, a 55 pound bow, and he made his first attempt at making a ladder 18 feet up into a tree, 18 feet. He said you couldn't have done a more poor, sloppy, or dangerous job of building one than he did. But he got up there the first day of deer season, terribly cold, in the dark, nothing could go wrong, and standing up there, no safety harness, no nothing like that thought of, sitting there shivering away, and finally as the sun comes up, he hears the crunch of the leaves, and here comes a buck, real nice buck, walking under him. He pulls his bow back and he fires. He's so excited because the deer took the arrow straight in and out the other side. And he was so excited he almost fell off. If he hadn't grabbed a side branch and there had been one there, he would have fallen 18 feet and probably been killed. But he held on up there then and then come down. That deer didn't go over 50 feet and then just flopped around and he was done. And he was very excited as he walked up there until he got up to see the deer. And the deer had fell into a very large area of poison ivy. Yeah. And so here he has to wade out into it, get the deer and pull it out of that area so he can field dresses it. And he said there is no question he was miserable even though they had some things they could do for uh, poison ivy, but he said he sure had it from head to toe going through that area with that deer. That was his first deer so story. Another great friend of mine, he tells this story. He was just a kid at the time when they started hunting deer in Nebraska in the 1950s. Went along with some people and he said, there, he said, there was probably most of a half a dozen guns, people ready to shoot, and they spotted a buck off, way off, maybe 500 yards, way over shooting range, but they didn't care. They started blazing away. And now this was before scopes. None of the guns had a scope, so they were just shooting out there with iron sights, and they weren't hitting nothing, just kicking dirt up. And finally, his father off to the side walked up to them and because he had given them permission to be on his land. And he said, give me that gun. And he took the gun, aimed, fired, and the old deer dropped. And he handed it back. He said, here, I don't need it anymore. I don't need it anymore. That's the kind of guy you wouldn't want shooting at you without question, without question. And my wife's story is very simple as well. The first time we went hunting, she allowed me to go with her. And I always said, you know, aim for his heart. I'd say things like that. And so when uh, we spotted a buck out there about 200 yards, she put her old 30 odd six pump, Remington pump up, and touched off the trigger. And that old buck just shook his head something fierce. And so. She pumped in another round, and she shot the second time. That old deer just dropped. But when we got up there, she had shot off one of the antlers. And I teased her about, hey, I didn't know their heart was in their antler. 
I never got to go deer hunting with her again. You guys have a good day.